Welcome to our channel, Circuits Analytica. In this video, we will discuss the topic why input impedance of an amplifier must be ideally infinite. For an ideal voltage source, source resistance Rs is equal to zero. And for an ideal amplifier, input resistance R in is equal to infinity. When a signal source is connected to the input of an amplifier, the whole input signal Vs appears across the amplifier input if and only if Rs is equal to zero or R in is equal to infinity. If both of the above conditions are not satisfied, effective voltage at the input of the amplifier V in will be less than the actual input voltage Vs due to division of voltage across the two resistors Rs and R in. So this is the ideal input signal and ideal amplifier. For an ideal input signal source resistance Rs is equal to zero and for an ideal amplifier input impedance R in is equal to infinity. So whatever be the applied voltage Vs, that voltage Vs appears across the input terminals of the amplifier. But practically, input signal source resistance Rs is not equal to zero and input impedance of the amplifier is R in is not equal to infinity. If you look at the input side, there we can see a loop which consists of voltage source Vs, source resistance Rs and input resistance of the amplifier R in. So a resistance Rs and R in forms a voltage divider network. A very small amount of voltage is dropped across the source resistance Rs and uh, the remaining voltage will be available across the input terminals of the amplifier R in. Let us consider a practical signal source and a practical amplifier. Let input signal is equal to 1 volt peak to peak. Let source resistance Rs is equal to 100 ohms. And let input resistance R in is equal to 100k. Apply voltage division rule to find the effective value of input voltage V in. V in is the voltage drop across input impedance of the amplifier R in. We can write V in is equal to I into R in application of Ohm's law. According to Ohm's law, voltage drop across a resistance is proportional to current flow through that resistance. Or V is equal to I into R. So here we can write V in is equal to I into R in. And current I can be written as I is equal to total voltage divided by total resistance that is I is equal to Vs divided by Rs plus R in. Therefore we can write V in is equal to Vs divided by Rs plus R in into R in. So in our example Vs is equal to 1 volt, R in is equal to 100k and Rs is equal to 100 ohms. We will get V in is equal to 0.999 volt and 1 millivolt or 0.0001 volt is dropped across the source resistance Rs. So even though the applied input signal is 1 volt, Effective voltage across the amplifier input is only 0.999 volt. A part of the input voltage is dropped across the source resistance of the signal source that means across resistance Rs. 
So we have applied one volt as the input signal, but across the amplifier input terminals, there is only 0 0.999 volt. A very small voltage, 0 0.001 volt is dropped across the source resistance RS. So the voltage drop across source resistance RS leads to a reduced effective input voltage V in. So V in is less than Vs. To overcome this problem, either source resistance RS must be zero or input impedance of the amplifier must be infinite. But in reality, RS is not equal to zero and R in is not equal to infinity. Following table shows values of effective input voltage for various values of input resistance R in when input voltage Vs is equal to 1 volt and source resistance Rs is equal to 100 ohms. When R in is equal to 80k, V in is equal to 0 0.9987 and so on. So when R in is equal to 10k, effective value of input voltage is only 0 0.99 volt. From the previous table, we can conclude that more the value of input impedance, the value of effective input voltage is high. As the value of input impedance decreases, more current flows towards the input terminals of the amplifier and so more voltage is dropped across the source resistance RS. So input impedance of an amplifier must be as high as possible so that current flow towards input terminals is as small as possible and so voltage drop across RS is also as small as possible. How to overcome this problem of voltage drop across the series source resistance RS? The reason for voltage drop across the source resistance of the signal source Vs is current flow through the amplifier input. By increasing the input impedance of the amplifier, current source from the signal source can be reduced which results in less voltage drop across resistance RS. Input impedance of an amplifier can be improved by connecting a buffer stage between the signal source Vs and amplifier input. So here in the diagram, there are actually three parts. A green shaded part which is the signal source a yellow shaded part which is the buffer amplifier and a red colored shaded part which is the amplifier. When a buffer amplifier stage is inserted between signal source Vs and amplifier input, as input impedance of the buffer stage is very high, there will not be any voltage drop across source resistance RS and as output resistance of buffer amplifier is zero, the whole output of buffer amplifier appears across the amplifier inputs. So in this way, by inserting a buffer stage between the input signal and amplifier input, we can overcome the problem of voltage drop across the source resistance RS. So for a buffer amplifier, input impedance is infinite and the output impedance is zero. Thanks for watching Circuits Analytica. Enjoy learning.